Hudson started 1972 in sensational style. Playing against Melbourne at the Glen Ferry Oval, the Hawks champion spearhead had kicked eight goals late in the second term. He may have failed by just one goal to eclipse Pratt's record in the 1971 Grand Final, but against the Demons, he was in magnificent form. Because at this stage, the Hawks not firing, but uh, certainly doing enough to keep Nolan out of it. Up they go, Keenan with the running, but Scott still manages to get the knock towards Then, Keenan. tragedy struck. He puts the up towards the half forward bank. Hudson's there and takes him out. Two against one, and yet he's still beaten. Slung to the ground by Melbourne defender know, Barry Burke, now, Hudson's knee twisted under him. His Drop agony was felt court. by every and spectator. It was to ground him for nearly 22 months, and the reigning Premier faded into obscurity without him. He's in pain, real pain. Two points have been Tottenham. Tottenham is Skipper. Skipper looks to goals, and there's another on the board. And at Windy Hill, Des Tottenham took over as captain coach of Essendon uh, and immediately made his mark after turbulent years with Collingwood. The side that finished 11th the previous two years responded to Tuddy's iron discipline and fearless leadership. They won the first four matches of the year and were destined for a place in the final. He instilled a toughness in them that occasionally came to the boil, like this day at the MCG against Melbourne. There were no reports from this brawl. The odd broken nose and Rip Guernsey provided the only aftermath. For the VFL Tribunal, it was a hectic year. They heard 30 reports. Under Captain Coach John Nichols, Carlton was emerging as the Premiership threat. They had good luck recruiting and finally wooed Greg Kennedy from Eaglehawk to Prince's Park. Kennedy kicked a club record of 12 goals against Hawthorne this day and marked himself as one of the top finds of the season. He was to go on and kick 76 goals for the season, trailing Peter McKenna, Essendon's centurion Jeff Blethen and Doug Wade in the goal kicking. Among other recruits to show out in 72 were John Henry at Hawthorne, South Norm Goss, Richmond Wingman, Brian Wood and North forward Arnold Brightis. With play like this, Len Thompson won the Brownlow medal at a canter, becoming the first magpie for 32 years to take football's highest individual honour. Within months, Thompson had gone into retirement after calling for a pay rise. The final series underwent a facelift with the introduction of the final five and for the first time the finals were played at both the AFL Park and the MCG. St Kilda won the last three games before the finals including a thriller at Glen Ferry Oval to keep Hawthorne out of the five. And then in the elimination final at Waverley the Saints demolished Essendon by 53 points before a crowd of more than 52,000. Not even the rugged example set by Tuddenham could inspire the Bombers that day. Players coming in a little bit excited, but Pip Tottenham taking a magnificent mark there, running back at it. Half time, fairly close. As Tottenham comes in and puts it right through the middle. Richmond went into the second semi-final against Carlton, having won the previous four encounters. The Blues led by 13 points at the beginning of the last term, but as Alex Jezelenko marked, the siren sounded with scores level. The siren! The siren has sounded! It's a draw! Carlton and Richmond have drawn on 8 goals, 13, 61 points. So next week, the kick from Jezelenko after the siren won't score! And it's a draw. It was the fifth finals tie in BFL history and shocked the experts who had installed Richmond as the hottest premiership favourites in years. For field umpire Ian Coates, the action was only over momentarily. As he walked from the ground, he was attacked from behind by an enraged spectator. I didn't see what happened. It was a nasty scene. From violence to beauty. Were rather These were the marks of the year 1972.
Richmond won the semi-final replay easily before 92,000 people at the MCG the following week, while Carlton came into the grand final the hard way, eliminating St Kilda in the preliminary final. It was the grand final that rewrote the record books. It had everything. Hard clashes. Plays down the other end. Bank on the other side of the ground. Sheedy and Dool doing battle. And oh! Walsh. Walsh of Richmond pushing the ball in front of him. He's got possession. Oh, he's unloaded. Ball to the half forward flank for Carlton on that outer side. And Hunter, one hander. And look at this. It's right there, but it's all Richmond. Boyle has cuts the ball away from his teammate in Clay. Clay gets a big knock. It goes back to Robert Walls. Walls has his hand on the ball. Goes driving down, looking for John Nichols and Boy and Brilliant Nichols goals. High and the big fellas almost take Alex Jeselinko kicks Blair seven goals. The Captain Coach well, John Nichols and Robert Walls, six apiece. Goes wide to the flank and you'll find Robert Walls here. Walls got the running on. Hunt runs around everybody there. Comes in now towards goal. Oh. Five years, the Carlton winning score of 28-9, 177 was the highest grand final score ever. Richmond's 22-18-150 would have won the Tigers the flag in any previous season. It was a real freak sort of a game, particularly by Carlton. I didn't think the scores were any real indication of the play because I thought they had played us, you know, by uh, many, many goals. I thought we were struggling all day long, you know, and I know the scoreboard only showed, I think, 27 points at the end of the day, but, I, you know, I think that we were well, probably, say, even a bit blessed to get within that. You know, we just... Uh, concentrated mainly on, on, on putting our strengths in our forward line that we had to, you know, just going with one thing, our, our defence, we, we didn't worry as much about our defence and we just concentrated on trying to kick, you know, a bigger school than Richmond, which probably sounds, you know, an old cliche, <laughs> yeah. but that was the style of play really in those eras. For the newly crowned Premiers, 1972 had a chilling anti-climax at the Australian Team Championships in Adelaide. There, the Blues met one Malcolm Brown. It was a meeting that left an impression on many of them. To make matters worse, Carlton lost the fight to the bulky West Australian and the championships to North Adelaide. For many Victorians, this telecast from Adelaide gave them their first sight of the outrageous Mr Brown. Within two years, he was throwing his weight around in the VFL.